Hi, I'm Ben with Suck It, and in this video we're going to go over the mill-it-yourself version of the dust boot for your Shea Poco 3. Let's get started. When you place the order, you'll receive a link to download the three .nc G-code files, one for the arm, one for the mount, and one for the shoe. Here's everything that will come in your package. You have the instructions, the brush, the mounting screws, three pieces of acrylic, your stickers, your Allen keys, mount spacer, height adjustment locks, thumb screws, magnets, and the vacuum port. There are three pieces of acrylic that will come with your kit. The one on the left is the support arm, the one in the middle is the shoe, and the one on the right is the mount. Let's start with the one on the left, the arms. Here you'll notice the mounting positions for your clamps. It's extremely important to mount them in the correct spaces or your bit will hit the clamps. We're using the Oops clamps by Sucket to clamp the material to the wasteboard. We want to make sure our acrylic is square to our wasteboard and please note the clamp positioning one on the right center and two on the left. Once our material is clamped securely to the wasteboard, we're going to be using a 1 8 inch bit. Any bit will do as long as it's a 1 8 inch bit. Now we'll find the corner. I'm using the touch probe in this video. You can use the paper method if you need to. All files will start on the bottom left as our zero. Also, all files will use the 1 8 inch bit. You won't have to change bits. Turn your router speed dial to 3. Here's what it looks like for the arms to be cutting out. This is 100 times speed. Once it's finished cutting, remove it from the wasteboard. We like to use a pair of snips to remove the tabs. If worse comes to worse, you can use a pair of scissors. Next, we'll be cutting out the mounting arms. Again, notice the placements of the clamps. We're repeating the exact same process again with our zero on the bottom left. We're using the touch probe to find our zero. Here's what the mounts look like being cut out. Again, this is sped up a hundred times. Now we just remove the clamps and we're going to use the same method using our snips to remove the tabs. Finally, we'll cut out the dust shoe. Take notice of the clamp position one last time. And this is cutting out the dust shoe at 100 times speed. There are several ways to get the tabs removed from the parts. We like to use a belt sander. You could also use a file or hand sand at this point. Don't forget the inside of the circles. We use a spindle sander for this method. Depending on the bit you used, you may have a sharp surface. We're using a sanding sponge to make those smooth. 
We'll now drill the holes for the magnets into our dust shoe. You'll need the shoe, a marker, and a caliper. Adjust your caliper to 0.2 inches. I find it easiest to lay the caliper on a table and the shoe up against the side of the table. We're going to measure from the front of the lip back 0.2 inches. We're going to do this on all four sides. Next, we'll set our calipers to 0.172. The markings we made earlier need to be in the center, so this will help us assist making those marks into the center. Repeat this step for all four marks. The next step, we'll need an awl or some sort of poking device, some tape, and a quarter inch drill bit. Place your bit into your drill or drill press. If you have a drill press, it's much easier. We're going to cut off a small piece of tape and then get our calipers and set the distance to 0.2 inches. We're going to measure from the bottom of the bit up the shaft and we're going to place that tape at the 0.2 inches mark. This will be a depth stop so we know how far down we need to drill. We're using a wood vise to help keep the dust shoe stable. You could hold this by hand if you don't have a vise. Now we take the awl and poke down into where we made our marks. This will give us a tiny bit of a hole so that the drill won't travel and will stay exactly where we want it to drill. Now we drill the holes, making sure to stop at where we just placed the tape mark. Repeat this process for all four holes. Now we need to drill out the holes for the arms. We're going to use a 3 16th inch bit for this process. Install it into your drill or drill press. Now set your calipers to 0.562 inches. We're going to measure from the top of the arm down, and we'll make a mark. Repeat this process for both arms. Take the mark you made on the side and place that into the front of the arm. We want to aim for center of the arm when we place this mark. Eyeballing is good enough. Repeat that for both arms. 
place them side by side and we can see that they're pretty level. Now we'll take the drill and drill all the way through. Now we're going to place the magnets into all of the parts. We need the two arms and the shoe and all of the magnets. We're going to grab the drilling tool and this is a 3D printed part that will help us align the magnets correctly. Take the pokey side and stick it into the holes in the shoe. This will just clean out anything that's inside and let the magnets fit inside better. We have four bigger magnets and four smaller magnets. We'll separate these out on the table. We'll take one of the smaller magnets and insert it into the mounting tool. It doesn't matter which way we place it, as long as it's fit inside, we will remove it later. Be careful on this part because this is where polarity matters. You'll notice I lifted it over one of the magnets and it stuck. We're going to get some CA glue and place it into the holes of the dust shoe on one side. We're not overfilling, we're just putting enough to where when we stick magnets in, they will stick and be glued inside. Now we grab the tool with the magnet stuck on the end and we stick that magnet inside the hole we just put glue in. We may need to stick our thumb over it to hold the magnet in. Now we're going to take that tool and grab a second one. And this allows us to keep both polarities correct. We're going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Now we'll stick the CA glue into the holes on the dust shoe. And if you have some accelerator, we can spray that onto the magnet itself. This will speed up the gluing process. You want to get these magnets as flush as you can to the edge of the dust boot. Now that all our magnets are inside the dust shoe, we're going to hold our dust boot over two magnets on one side and let them hang on to the side. These are the shorter magnets. We're then going to get one arm. We're going to line that up and use the dust shoe as our alignment tool for the magnets on the arm. Place some CA glue in the slots provided for the magnets and then hold the dust shoe over the arm aligning the magnets into the hole. We've got one side finished and now we're going to repeat that process on the other side. Make sure that you didn't glue the arm to the dust shoe. You only want the magnets to connect to each other. We're going to need the magnet that's in our mounting tool. We won't need that tool anymore, so we can go ahead and use a pair of pliers or snippers and just cut it out. We'll throw that tool away. Keep the magnet. All right, we're going to put our magnets on the other side of the dust shoe and put our CA glue in the arm we haven't done yet. And then mount the magnets inside these holes using the dust shoe as our mount. In a few seconds, our glue should be dry and our magnets be glued into the holes. 
and we've finished installing all of the magnets. Now we can mount our arm onto the machine. We're ready for assembly onto the machine, but first we need to put our stickers onto the arm mounts. So we'll remove the sticker, we'll peel it off and place it onto the sides. The socket wording will be at the bottom of the mount. We're going to repeat the process so both arms will match. Now we're going to take the brush and place it into the groove on the dust boot. We want it to angle in towards the center of the dust boot. We'll take the vacuum port and place it into the hole on top of the dust boot. It should be a friction fit, but if you want this to be a permanent fixture, use the same CA glue we use for the magnets and attach them together. Now we're going to locate the four mounting screws along the top plate where your limit switch is and remove them keep these screws because you may need to replace them later on. Now we take the mounting spacer, the mount, the two washers, and then the appropriate bolts and we'll place them in. I line up one through to make it easier to align on the machine and then we'll place them into the bolts uh, holes we just removed and attach the mounting arms We'll repeat the same process for the left hand side. Now we'll take the height adjusting lock and the longer portion is going to aim up we're going to place that in the groove behind the arm we just mounted. Now we'll grab the right hand support arm. The groove is going to face towards the router. And we're going to get the mount screw. Place that in the hole with a washer. And that will go into the height adjusting lock behind it. We're going to tighten these down, but not over tighten, just to where it's about hand tight. We'll repeat this process on the left hand side. Once we got both support arms to about the same height, we'll go ahead and slip our dust shoe into the slots and everything should align perfectly. We can loosen the thumb screws and raise and lower our shoe to the height we need it. Now anytime you need to, you can raise and lower the dust boot according to how thick your material is you're cutting. Congratulations, you just finished the millet yourself version of the Suck It Dust Boot. You're on your way to dust-free CNC work. Happy cutting!